Let's take a look at some of the atypical drugs. There are atypical drugs that will act through the benzodiazepine receptor. There are drugs that will act through the melatonin receptor. There are also drugs that will act through the serotonin receptor. And there are drugs that will act through the newly discovered orexin receptor. The atypical drugs that act through the benzodiazepine receptor include drugs like Zolapem. It causes increased flow through the chloride channel. Once again, it helps GABA by inhibiting the gamma subunit, and it binds between the alpha and gamma subunits. You can see that it's a slightly different binding site than both benzodiazepine and flumazenil. It acts through only one type of receptor, and that receptor which contains the alpha-1 type of subunit. More specific actions with this drug. So you get insomnia control without some of the other side effects, because you're now acting at a more specific level of the brain. This is why these new drugs seem to be a little bit better for treating insomnia. Flumazenil, or anexate, is an antagonist to these types of drugs. And that's because flumazenil's binding point is actually very close to drugs like Zolapem's binding point. It is used as a reversal agent in overdoses from these medications. And as I said before, it binds at a similar site to both the benzodiazepines and Zolapem. Let's talk about the atypical drugs that act through the melatonin receptor. So Remelton is a melatonin agonist. It is active in the suprachiasmatic nuclei, so it's very, very useful in insomnia treatment. The thing that I like about this class of drugs is that they have a low risk for abuse. They are less addictive than the other medica medications, including benzodiazepines. Now, one of the downsides is that it is metabolized through an, to an active metabolite by cytochrome systems. So in, in this regard, it will interact with drugs like fluvoxamine and the azole antifungals. So be aware that you can get drug interactions with this medication. Tazemelton, or Heliotaz, is a very commonly prescribed medication. Once again, it also is a melatonin agonist. Once again, it also works in the suprachiasmatic nuclei. And it is for this strange disorder called the non-24-hour sleep-wake disorder in blind people. So let me just explain this really quickly. Blind people can't see the sun for obvious reasons. And melatonin is an agent in, that is naturally made in the brain in response to light. So it helps us with our sleep-wake cycles. Blind people don't have that cue, so they sometimes have altered melatonin levels. This drug is used to help blind people sleep at night and wake during the day. Um, it is the only drug, I believe, that is currently licensed for use in this particular disorder. And that's why I do want you to remember this particular melatonin antagonist, because it's probably the only one that we'll see in a long time uh, indicated for this sleep disorder. Let's move on to the atypical drugs that act through the newly discovered orexin receptor. Suvorexant is an orexin receptor antagonist. It does have very good hypnotic profi profiles. Let's take a look at its profile issues, though, with respect to safety. The safety in addictive risk persons is unknown, so we don't know if it's going to be a highly addictive medication or not. The safety in pregnancy is currently unknown, and the safety in breastfeeding is currently unknown. So we don't know a lot of things about this new class of drugs. Uh, as time goes on, we'll know more and more. Now, you should be aware that this drug class does interact currently with all cytochrome system drugs. So it's an important consideration when you have people on multiple medications as to whether or not you're going to use these medications. Atypical drugs that act through the serotonin receptor include buzzaprone or busbar. This is a very, very commonly used medication. It is a selective anxiolytic. It has minimal sedative effects and motor effects or rebound. Um, it acts on the 1A serotonin receptor. Now, serotonin receptors are sometimes called serotonin receptors. Sometimes they're called 5-HT receptors. So just to be clear, 5-HT and serotonin are the same thing. 
This drug has a very slow onset of action, and it's used in generalized anxiety disorders, but not in panic disorders. Generalized, generalized anxiety disorders require long-term treatment. Panic disorders are relatively rapid-on, rapid-off kinds of problems, so long-term drugs don't work as well in these types of uh, situations. We're going to see the psychiatry lectures later on for more information, so we won't talk about it too much today. Side effects with these medications, the thing I want you to remember is once again, these drugs do have interactions through the cytochrome system. They can cause tachycardia. They can cause meiosis and GI distress as well. The thing that you want to remember about this drug and the thing that is important for your exam, as well as in practice, is that this is one of the few drugs that's actually safe in pregnancy. So this is where it comes into play. So let's summarize some of the sleep disorder drugs that we use in modern medicine. We used to use a lot of benzodiazepines like fluorazepam, but not so much now because they've been replaced by these newer drugs. They start with the letter Z, so sometimes it's easy to remember them. Zopiclum, Zelopon, Zopiclone, Ezopiclone. They all have Z or Z in their, uh, in their nomenclature, so it's sometimes easier for us to pick them out. They have alpha-specific atypical agents acting through the benzodiazepine receptor, and these are very effective agents in sleep and insomnia as well. And the newer melatonin-specific agents are rapidly increasing in popularity. There is also a product out in the herbal product world called melatonin. A lot of people like to buy melatonin over the counter uh, as a herbal product. Unfortunately, we don't really know what's in these bottles. Some of the bottles that are being sold in herbal product stores have no melatonin specific agents and some of them have too much. So it's very hard to predict whether or not these uh, agents are useful or not. There is biological plausibility for them. But I say buyer beware, and you're better off just getting something that actually has a USP number. There's going to be a specific subset of patients who are uh, unique, and these are people who rely heavily on motor skills. So I want you to think of the plastic surgeons and the neurosurgeons in your, in, in your world, and think about if they have anxiety, what are we going to treat them with? Well, Buzzaprone or Buspar has little psychomotor side effects. So if you have a person who is heavily dependent on motor skills, whether they're an artist or a surgeon, this is a great choice. The other reason why this is a good choice is because it's safe in pregnancy. Uh, a nice thing about these drugs, this particular class of drug, is that it has a low risk of addiction. <music>